What are you going to tell him? Are you going to tell him that I build houses, I bought cars, and I did this and that? But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we're living in the time of the end. And this is the days which were spoken of by the prophets. These are the days which were pro prophesied back in the days. The prophets say that a day will come when man will be lovers, people will love themselves, they will be boasters, blasphemers, they will be truth breakers, they will love evil, and they will make evil to look good. These days, people don't want to hear the truth of the gospel. People don't want to hear what is the truth. Many people are still hating on each other. People are busy looking for money. People are busy looking for things. But the Bible tells us that judgment belongs to God and is appointed for man to die once and after that judgment. When you die, where are you going? Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? And the gospel is very clear. Jesus did not tell us that you need to do anything to be saved. He said that all you need to do is believe. But people are trying to do so many things to be saved. You want to go to heaven based on your good works? You want to go to heaven based on what you've done? But the Bible tells us that it's all by grace through faith that we are saved. We are saved by just believing. We are saved by believing. We are not saved by doing anything. I know there are so many churches nowadays, they're lying to people that you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to come to my church, you need to come there. You need to do so many things to be saved. But salvation is free. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to pay anything to be saved. People have never known the truth of the gospel. That is all by faith. It's all by faith, believing in what Jesus Christ did for us. Many people don't know what Jesus did for us because they don't even believe that Jesus is God. Many people don't want to believe and that is what we call the spirit of the Antichrist. People don't want to believe. If there is a way that you could go to heaven without Jesus Christ, then why did Jesus have to die? Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it is very easy to go to heaven, but very few people are going to find that way. The Bible told us the way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to me, no one goes to the Father, but through me. Now, let's ask ourselves, if Jesus told us to believe the gospel, so what is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, and by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus, he gave us salvation for free. He gave us salvation for free. Salvation is a free gift. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest anyone should boast. Salvation is a free gift. And today, the Bible says, if you can hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Today is the day of salvation. So how are you going to be saved? You're saved by believing the gospel. What is the gospel? Gospel is all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. How Christ died. How Jesus Christ died for our sins. How did Jesus die? We know very well that Jesus died by shedding all his blood. Jesus shed his blood, every drop of his blood for you and for me. Then you ask yourself a simple question then, if Jesus died by shedding his blood, why was the blood so important that Jesus had to shed that blood? The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, that without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Then we ask ourselves the next question. So what is so important with this blood that Jesus had to shed? His blood. What is so important? What is in the blood that Jesus had to shed that blood? 
The Bible tells us in the book of Leviticus 17:11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. So the blood is where the life is found. And that's why Jesus had to shed his blood for you and for me. So that you can be saved. Jesus shed his blood for you and for me. So that you can be saved. When he was shedding his blood at the cross, he was literally removing his blood. He was literally giving you his life and you giving him your death so that Jesus could die with your corrupted blood at the cross and gives you a new blood which he has, which is sinless. Jesus loves us so much that he gave himself to die for sinners. What manner of love is this? That someone would die for his friends. What manner of love is this? That peep, someone would wake up one day and say, I'm going to give my life for a friend. For someone who is a sinner. For someone who has done much bad things unto God. Remember God created us by, uh, with his own image. He created us and he gave us his image. And the image of God is very simple. The image of God is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. A representation of body, soul, and spirit. And he gave us the same nature, like the nature of God. We have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. But then at the Garden of Eden, people, they took their character. Let me tell you something. God just... He did not want to create robots. So he gave us something called a free will. He gave us a free will that we can be able to do according to how we feel because it's only robots who are programmed. God said, let me give man a free will. And there can never be free will without a choice. So God, when he gave us a free will, he gave us a choice. You either follow me and you live forever or you follow your way and you're going to die. And man decided that he's going to follow his own way. He ate the forbidden fruit, and for sure man died. But uh, Adam and Eve could have not have yet fallen there and then, but their spirit died from within. And from that day, we, man has always been two out of three parts, that is, with only a body and a soul. And Satan has worked so hard to make sure that he, he picks also your soul. But now when you get saved, your spirit comes alive. That's why you have to be born of the spirit. You have to be born again. You have to come back to the fullness of exactly what God created. Jesus loves us so much that even when we failed and when we, we were in our dark times, when we had, we had lost it all, Jesus loved us so much that he came all the way to come and die for us so that he can... He can give us a new life, a new start. In Adam, we all die. In Adam, we all die because we are all born sinners. And the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But then, there is a gift. And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus, he came to give us life and to give us that life abundantly. Many people still don't want this life which was given to us free of church. People still want to live their own way. People want to look for money and they do things and enjoy their lives. And whenever it comes to things of God, nobody wants to hear anything. But remember, the Bible tells us just as it was in the days of Noah. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He used to preach and tell people that please get into the ark. There is no time. There is no time get into the ark. But people were mocking Noah and others were saying, Noah, you must be a madman. Noah, come on, I know where you are, I know where the ark is. I will come there later. Noah, please don't tell me these things. I still have a life to live. I've just bought a new this. I've not, I bought a new this and I want to go and try it. But let me tell you, the day when, when God closed uh, uh, locked the ark and remember the Bible says that what God has closed no man can open what God has opened no man can close on the same 
the same day when God locked Noah into the ark with his family, that same day rain poured out from all corners and all those people were drawn down. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. Are you going to be found unworthy? Are you going to be found still in your sins? Let me tell you, the Bible tells us that Jesus loves us so much that he decided he's going to come and give us eternal life. So that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. My brother, my sister, all you need to do is hear this good news. And you believe this good news. But how will you believe what you have not heard? How will you hear without a preacher? And that's why God has sent people to come and speak to you. Because these are the days of the end. These are the end times. These are the end times. The Bible tells us that the same way it is right now, just the same way it is right now, it's going to be exactly the same way when Jesus comes back. Many people are going to be going on with their own things. People will not really care what is going on. People will not really worry about anyone. People will be lovers of themselves. They will be truth breakers. People are going to change like the way we are seeing today in modern society. A lot of evil has been made to look good. Homosexuality, sodomy, so many things are happening in the world. And everybody seems to think it's normal. Nobody really thinks that these things are bad. They are written in the Bible. But people want to live their own ways. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it is very simple to get into heaven. But many are not going to see that gate of heaven. Not because someone was not in a position to, but because they never wanted to hear. And the Bible says, if you can hear his voice, do not harden your heart. If you can hear the voice of God speaking to you, do not harden your heart. Because today is the day of salvation. Today is that appointed day that Jesus is speaking to your heart and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be changed. He wants you to have a new mind and a new heart. He wants to show you his love in fullness. But people are still looking upon their lives. People don't want to hear this truth. It is very simple to get saved. Let me tell you, how can you be saved? All you need to do to be saved is hear the gospel. You hear the gospel, you understand the gospel, you believe the gospel, and you confess to God what you believe. It's very simple to be saved. Very simple to be saved. All you need to do is hear the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. You hear it. You understand it. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. And through the blood, when the blood is shed, then the life is coming out. The payment of sin is being done. So Jesus shed his blood for you. So that you can be able to get eternal life. And after you understand that Jesus was shedding his blood for your sake, then you believe and you say for sure it is for me it wasn't for anyone else jesus didn't die because of nothing he died because of you he died so that you can get eternal life he died so that you can be saved and once you believe this the next thing you do is just to confess to god what you believed you tell god i have understood myself i know i've been a sinner I know I've done this and this and this, but today I receive the free gift of salvation by faith because the only way you can receive the gift of salvation is by faith. It is by faith, brothers and sisters. You cannot receive this gift by doing something. There is nothing that you can do to be saved. There is purely nothing that you can do to be saved. It is by believing, putting your trust in the finished work of Jesus at the cross. My friends, 
Maybe you never know why we came here. You never know why we're here. But the reason is, God loves you so much that he prepared a way that you can hear the gospel. The gospel is free, it's not for sale. The gospel is free, it was given freely. And all you need to do is believe. Believe in the gift that Jesus gave us. He gave us this gift for a specific reason, so that whosoever believes will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Remember I told you when I was starting, that it's appointed for man to die once. And after you die, then you'll face the judge. And that judge is Jesus Christ. Some people, they say, oh, I don't really believe in this salvation thing. I don't really believe in this heaven, hell thing. It's okay. For now, you may not believe. But a day is coming. It's going to be very clear to you. The moment you take your last breath, you, you die. That's the moment it's going to come to you clearly and you're going to understand for sure. Why did I never believe? Every day people are dying. We have seen, uh, like for example, ever since this pestilence started in the year 2020, so many people have died. Each and every minute people are dying. Let me ask you, where are they going? What are they going to say to the creator who created them what are you going to say to the god who created you are you going to sit down and say it is okay god just let me in are you just going to say god please just let me in i was a good person you see i didn't lie so much god you see i did not kill anyone anyway let me tell you there are so many people in hell today who are trying their best who are crying and praying prayers which do not cannot be answered in hell there are so many prayers people crying and saying i am sure now i understand you are true i understand god what you're saying it was really true and now i believe but no one is there to answer their prayers you can still be saved if you're still alive but once you cross the other side how can you be saved my brothers how can you be saved my sisters jesus is here and he's speaking in your heart and if you can hear him do not 